So hi, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. And uh, let me start with a quick question. I think that you all know how to connect uh, BigQuery and the data flow. It's a common use case, very well documented. But when you need to insert, update, delete rows in a mini batch mode, do you think a Nolabe database is a good choice? Let's figure it out. My name is Leo, and uh, I'm Florian. we are both working at Octo Technology, based in Paris, part of Accenture Digital, and we are specialized on GCP solution as a data engineer and data scientist. Okay, first, let's start with the why. The technical approach we are solving comes from a specific use case we got uh, from one of our clients. We implemented a streaming pipeline in order to populate a search engine index. So imagine that you're responsible of a store or supermarket, and you need to have an up-to-date data platform with product details like prices and quantities and so on. We have a main data stream that we need to enrich with many other sources. To continue with our star example, it needs that maybe we need to know the quantity of a product to adjust this price. Let's highlight this dependency constraint with an example. So in this graph, we see that file A depends on file B and cannot be sent without file B information. Once file B is received, both information contained in file A and file B can be sent to the search engine index. So we can imagine that file A contain the product and file B will contain the price of any product. So we don't have any specific order nor time interval in file reception. So using watermark, session windows, state or timers won't be possible here. Also, incomplete rows must not be sent to the search engine index. That has to be updated as soon as possible. So you see here that we have to find a storage system that can handle these requirements. Yes, indeed. Of course, uh, our first idea, since we have an enrichment data problem, uh, was to use a stateful DFN with a timer and why it didn't work. And um, for two reasons. First, the, um, the enrichment data is uh, too large to fit in uh, memory. So we cannot use the um, state feature uh, of uh, SQL DFN, of uh, DFN, sorry. And uh, moreover, the time interval between dependent file reception is random, and in some cases, some files may never arrive. So the question, as we need an external storage system, is what kind of storage can we use? We know that uh, there is, uh, on one side, BigQuery, which is a no-life database used for uh, large storage and uh, fast analy analytical requests. And on the other end, there is uh, Cloud SQL databases uh, and also Cloud Spanner that allows you to do a more transactional workload. And uh, in our case, it will, more f more, it will be more suitable to our use case um, because we need uh, to apply a lot of mini transaction to interact uh, with the database, uh, uh, like if it were uh, a state, uh, an external state. So um, this slide introduced the architecture we built to solve our client issue. First, we use data flow that allows auto-scaling and size file handling. Then we know that near real time can be achieved with the data flow streaming mode. As we said earlier, uh, we use Cloud SQL as a transactional database for our SQL statements. And finally, we use Cloud Storage pops up depending on the cases to feed our pipeline. So the question now is, as we need a storage system, what kind of connector can we use? So of course, we check into uh, Apache Beam uh, built-in I.O. module, and we found some useful transform to interact with a Cloud SQL database. There is the GDBC connector that uh, allows reading and writing data in a Cloud SQL database as an, as an I.O. connector. 
So it means at the end or at the beginning of a pipeline. But remember our use case. What we need here is flexibility. It means that we need to uh, create a select or update statement in a dynamic manner based on the value inside uh, OP collection. So the GDBC connector here is not flexible enough for us. And also, we also want to, um, to apply um, in the same manner um, updates, deletes, and other uh, SQL uh, operations. So that's why we need to create our own connector. We looked at how we could create our own connector. Um, it's not that easy. So um, we looked at the documentation in Apache Beam. You have different solutions that can be used. Uh, we chose the one uh, is to use the pardo function and group by key operation. Um, because we collect information at the row level, we could use do function and not split table do function, but we have to pay attention to the efficiency of the pipeline. For example, uh, we have to ensure that our pipeline is well parallelized using reshuffle or grouping operation. Also, to create our own connector, we have to first instantiate a connection object. Then we have to deal with auto-scaling properties and deal with the number of connections that will be created in our pipeline. We also have to be careful with the hidden potency of our SQL statements. And finally, we have to be careful of any the failure logic, like um, trying to make a exponential backoff algorithm in case of SQL statement that fail or any connection that fail. Yes, indeed. Uh, so first thing, sir, uh, how to create a connection object that will be used to interact with the database uh, each time we perform a query. For that, we can use the official uh, Cloud SQL Python connector object. It provides interesting features uh, such as uh, an improved encryption, but also uh, it uh, allows you to get rid of uh, password and username uh, authentication and uh, use instead um, the, uh, the service accounts. Uh, also, as mentioned in the uh, official uh, documentation, and because we are good Apache Beam students, uh, we of course instantiate the connection object in the setup method uh, of the DoFN and uh, not uh, in the start bundle method, and uh, of course not uh, in the process method. Because what we want is to limit the number of connections created. But uh, unfortunately, we very soon faced a lot of too many request errors in our pipeline. So let me explain you a little bit why. We discovered that when we create a co new connection inside our SQL DoFN, two API, API calls are made to a Cloud SQL admin server that handles auto authentication, uh, among uh, other things. And uh, unf unfortunately, there is, uh, by default, a quota of 600 calls per minute for this server. This means that if for a few minutes we create more than 300 connections, the pipeline gets stuck. And that's exactly what happened when the pipeline autoscales. Indeed, when the pipeline autoscales, there is more worker created. So it means that there is more call to the setup method and then more connection created. You can see in the graph here that uh, around 5 p.m., the pipeline starts to autoscale. And a few minutes later, there is a raise in the number of, uh, of uh, too many requests error, just, uh, just here. So what we need to do then is to try to find a way to, uh, to find the number of, uh, uh, of, uh, of connection, trying to find a way to predict the number of connections that will be created in order to never um, uh, go up to this limit. But this is not possible. You, you cannot predict the exact number, but you can have an upper bound on the number of connections. That's why you have the max here. Um, the data flow service does not guarantee how many times a DoFN will be invoked, 
nor does it guarantee the exact number of DoFN instances created over the course of your pipeline. Um, however, the following table gives you some insights on the level of parallelism you can expect, and it estimates an upper bound on the number of DoFN instances. So let's see how to maximize and control the number of connections created in our pipeline. To understand it, let's deep dive into the data flow parallelism. Here, uh, you have a virtual machine that is by default N1 standard 2. It contains two units of CPU. Its, chip, its CPU have by default in Python 12 thread. So it means that for one DoFN, that instantiate connection, in one virtual machine, you have 24 connection. And this is just for one SQL DoFN. It means uh, a DoFN that executes SQL statements. So it leads to the following equation. The maximum number of connection will be equal to the number of workers in your pipeline, multiplied by the number of CPU per worker, multiplied by the number of thread, multiplied by the number of SQL do function. OK. That was a tough one, but what you have to uh, remember from uh, this equation is that uh, we are very limited in the maximum number of workers we can use. So our goal is to maximize this variable. And for that, we leverage the power of uh, beam.shared module in order to create the connection in the shared module and to share the connection uh, across all uh, processes uh, in each worker. With this feature, we can now use, instead of a single connection, a pool of connection, which is shared uh, at the worker level. And uh, with the uh, shared uh, module, um, the equation becomes now the maximum number of connections will be equal to the number of workers multiplied by the number of virtual CPUs per worker multiplied by the pool size. So, as you can see, we get uh, rid of the number of states in the previous equation because with the share uh, handle, um, the, uh, the object uh, is created at the runner level and you don't have to recreate all the connection each time you perform a SQL do FN step. Okay. In case of failure, let's uh, remind you that uh, according to the life cycle of a do FN, the setup method may be, um, may be called more than once. But uh, fortunately, we handled this <laughs> with the shared module since uh, the pool of connection is only created once. Um, also, as uh, discussed previously, failure handling is an important issue to tackle when you create uh, uh, SQL connectors. And that's why we implemented an exponential backoff algorithm in order to face failed worker or any other issues with the SQL statements. OK. Um, now let's do a focus on idempotency. potency. Um, so a SQL operation is called idempotent if it produces the same results no matter how many times it is performed. Because of the data flow parallelism, operation in a P connection can be performed multiple times in two different threads, for example. So we have to control that this behavior is fine with our SQL logic. Um, so let's say we have a table, and we just want to insert one row in a table. Um, here you have two kind of insert statements. The first one won't be idempotent. The reason is that if it applied twice, the second sta statement will result in a duplicate key violation error. So one basic example, and it's just a basic example, is to simply ignore the conflict. So this is not very good for <laughs> kind of SQL operation, but it will work, and the second one will be idempotent. So also, with update statement, you have to be careful. Um, as an example, imagine that you have to update a value, incrementing its value by one. Do you think this kind of update statement will be idempotent? No. Okay. The answer is no. Because if it's applied twice, 
the counter will be incremented by two. So you have to find some tricks to ensure that you won't use that kind of SQL statements. And for example, in the update case, maybe the something good will be to first apply a select statement to collect the value of that particular column, then introduce a check checkpointing of operation, and finally, update the value based on the information you collected in the first select. So you see that idempotency is a key concept when dealing with SQL operation in data flow, and it's very easy to do mistakes. Sometimes you cannot see it because it will be in your table, and sometimes it will result in this kind of errors. Yes, thank you, Florian. So uh, to, um, to sum up a little bit uh, all what we, uh, what we have seen, um, when you are facing a problem, uh, that is that you, you want to control the number of objects that will be created because you are making API calls to uh, an external service and you don't have a choice, what is uh, the approach that you can have? So first, we have uh, our equation that allows us to identify the maximum number of workers we can use to ensure that uh, there is no too many request error uh, in the pipeline. Then, before each uh, SQL do FN, we want to reduce the parallelism and use the maximum number of workers as an argument uh, in a reshuffle step. Then we can apply uh, the, um, the Pardo function, the SQL do FN um, function. And then, just after that, we apply another beam.reshuffle, uh, but this time with a number cats equal none in order to maximize parallelism for the next steps. This is what we call um, balance control and power in our pipeline. OK, and now to um, close this presentation, uh, we'll, do, we'll do a small sum up of what we've discussed. So first, uh, the available Apache Beam Cloud SQL connector are very useful if you use them as input of output of, our pipe, of your pipeline. Um, the GCP connector is also a good solution if you, your pipeline is not expected to scale up fast. And if you want to configure your own Cloud SQL connector, that is uh, quite difficult, by the way, um, it requires some specification. First, using the setup method for instantiation, then using the beam.shared module to share a connection pool. That is also a good SQL practice. Um, you also need a well-defined connector object if the workflow is too heavy. Also, some kind of retry mechanism uh, because you, are, you will have to deal to any problem when created or executing SQL statements. And finally, and this is the most important, carefully choose the SQL statement you do that have to be independent. So, merci beaucoup. Uh, and do you have any question? Yes, man.